Well, in a moment, I'll be speaking to the Labour MP, Khalid Mahmoud, who leads the all-party parliamentary group on extremism. But I'm joined now from northern Syria by Ahmed Agez, who's fighting there with Jabhat al-Nusra, an organisation affiliated to al-Qaeda. Uh, Ahmed Agez, if you return to the UK, you understand, presumably, that you'll be treated as a terrorist and, under these new laws, have your passport seized? Well, um, I don't plan to come back to the UK, so I don't think that really matters. But if you did, and other British jihadis like yourself, you would expect to have your passport seized? Well, if they would like to go back, then that's their choice. Uh, that's not something that I'm really interested in. But you understand that the British government uh, would deem yourself, as someone who fights with al-Nusra, uh, a terrorist? Well, what can I say? If they view me as a terrorist, then what can I do for them? You know, uh, if they're terrified of me, then what can I do about it? But you accept that? You, you would call yourself a terrorist? I'm a terrorist for those that are terrified of me. You know, I don't really choose to be uh, a terrorist for specific people. I only choose to be a terrorist for the enemies, you know? For example, Bashar al-Assad and those that fight Islam. OK, so where does that end? Because should the British public, for example, be terrified of you or other British jihadis if you were to return and if others were to return? Really what the, uh, uh, the British need to think about, you know, they, they keep asking, uh, are they a threat? Really what they need to think about is why would they be a threat? For example, why doesn't uh, Sweden view uh, the Mujahideen here or the foreign fighters here as a threat and they allow uh, those Swedish uh, citizens that fight in Syria, they allow them to go back without any uh, hassle. So why does the UK view us as a threat? Well, um, no, but are you, are you a threat? If you, if you or others like you were to return, should the British public fear you? Of course, uh, of course they wouldn't, because if someone is to go back, you know, it, he's not expected to, to be a threat or do an attack because he's very limited. So, really, if you look at it logically, they shouldn't be viewed as a threat. Well, except that you started, you were engaged in a war that was started as a revolution against Assad. It's now become a, a sectarian conflict where you're killing Shias simply because of their beliefs. No, it still is uh, a revolution, just like the beginning, you know, it's an Islamic revolution. And, you know, the, the killing happens in the battlefield. Well, it's not... It's, I mean, do you condemn the killing of Shias, then? Do I condemn the killings of Shias in a battlefield? Yes. Of course not. In the battlefield, you, you kill the enemy. Well, not by whatever means, though, do you? Because that would be a war crime, wouldn't it? Beheadings of the sort that we've had reported uh, from al carried out by Al Nusra, th those would be war crimes. They would be considered war crimes. I don't understand the question. Well, crimes carried out by Al Nusra on the battlefield, yes, but if they're extrajudicial killings, they're war crimes. People are being beheaded. Those would constitute war crimes, wouldn't they? I mean, who? makes, uh, you know, the war crime law and, and who judges what a war crime is? Well, let me ask you another question then. If you... It's been reported that uh, Al Nusra threatened to behead, has threatened to behead uh, a Lebanese soldier in captivity. Would you condemn that? The, the sound is kind of breaking up. I couldn't understand the question. Would you condemn Al Nusra's threats to behead a Lebanese soldier? I, I, can't, I can't hear you properly, sorry. It's been reported that Al Nusra has threatened to behead a Lebanese soldier who's in captivity. Would you condemn that? Why did they threat to uh, you well, know, execute a Lebanese soldier? Well, ask not why, but would you condemn that threat to behead a Lebanese soldier? Did they specify behead? And then you need to look at why they. Yes, they did to specify beheading. A... Yes, they did. Would you con condemn beheadings by Al Nusra and threatened beheadings by Al Nusra? My answer is: you need to look at why they 
uh, they would execute him. Amada Gaze, thank you for joining us. Let's move now to Khalid Mahmoud, uh, the Labour MP who chairs the parliamentary group on extremism. Uh, Khalid Mahmoud, seizing passports, is that the right way to deal with British jihadis like Amada Gaze and others like him? Well, I don't know whether we can actually get to that because we don't at the moment have sufficient people patrolling our borders. This government decided to cut 50%, oh, 50% of the border agency staff looking at passport control. Uh, whilst it sounds good at a soundbite, until I've been asking for the last six months of the Home Secretary uh, and the Prime Minister what they're going to do about that. Pushing this legislation forward on Tuesday uh, in soundbite terms is good. They wasted four and a half years already by bringing this, delaying this, uh, this bill to come forward now. They retracted a lot of the stuff that the Labour Party had put in 2010. Uh, and really, I don't think this really holds any water at the moment. Well, how would you deal with uh, uh, Ahmad Degaze? You heard what he said. How would you approach him if he were to return to the UK and others like him? Well, first of all, if you haven't got the border staff, how can you deal with it? Uh, and what I'm saying to the government, and I've been saying for the, six, uh, for the last six months, is that you need to increase and put back uh, the people that you've already made redundant in order to be able to assess what people are coming back for, where they're coming from, what they've done and how to deal with that. If you can't deal with it, then how can you actually do something about it? What I would want if I could actually do something is to look at the situation of who are the people coming back, what they want to do when they come back and how do we deal with that. Uh, and therefore, there are issues. People are talking about de-radicalization. People are looking at trying to work with some of these people when they come back and how we can deal with that. Uh, people are also talking about the legality of whether you can do anything else to their passports in that respect. So I think the big questions at the moment the government's got to answer in forward bringing this bill forward is how do they deal with all of that. For me, they haven't answered a lot of those questions yet. Khalid Mahmood, thank you very much for joining me. Chris.